healing, prosperity, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us now. It's your season. It's your time. Hear and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Hey, everybody. This is Nidetra Young. I am your master life coach. Listen, today I just want you to trust yourself. And you're probably saying, trust myself? Yes, I'm telling you to trust yourself because today you have an opportunity to receive the best help, the best care that you can possibly get at Win Academy. There's so many things that are going on in this world today and someone needs you to show up. More than anything, the people need you to be strong and courageous today and you're probably saying why strong why courageous I'm going through so much I understand we're all facing a lot today this is where Win Academy Master Life Coach Nadia Young comes in because I can help change your life I can help you get some spiritual principles some natural principles and some life coaching i i'd be the one that you can sit and talk to and tell all your problems to all right so listen i want you to be the one to join with us win academy so that you can win you have the opportunity not only just to receive help but if you say listen i don't need the help but i love helping other people okay connect with Win Academy because why? I can get you certified as a master life coach. We have so many great opportunities here at Win Academy. You have the option today to make sure you call that number 1-844-YOU-WIN. Remember ladies and gentlemen, you are winning today. Pick up the phone, let someone help you and lead you into the right direction. Once again, this is your master life coach. We want to share with you, yeah, in your family, family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in our streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives with Everybody, I am so glad to be with you today. My name is Prophetess Naditra Young, and I am telling you, I am so excited to tell you what God has in store for you today. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started, but before we get started, let us go to the throne of grace. Father, we thank you right now for each and every person that is tuning in. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in their lives. God, we ask you right now to come in. Hallelujah. Come in and take over this broadcast right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just ask you to rain on us today. We ask you to open up the windows of heaven and rain on us today. Father, we ask you to allow this broadcast to uh, push the people to the next level to put your people in place and put them in order God so they can go do exactly what you called them to do father that the vision that is written my God from Zion will be plain my God and they'll be able to go through the process with ease father give us peace today God enlighten us open us up God to new things and we just thank you right now because God we know that you're able to do 
exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. There's nothing too hard for you. And Father, we just thank you because you're taking full control of us today. In Jesus' name, amen. I am so excited. <laughs> praise God, praise God, praise God. Listen. I just want to share with you today. It is not going to be long, but I just want to share with you what God was giving me to be able to bless you today. I just want to share with you some great things that God is doing in your life. I want to share with you how God wants to open you up and take you to a whole nother level. But it is now your time. It is your time to go to uh, uh, the next level in life. And I'm just so ready to give this information to you today. I am so ready to give you the word. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So the Holy Ghost was dealing with me about several things. And if you're like me, you're prophetic and you, you talk to God, you hear God, and, and he talks to you and gives you so much information. And you're like, God, well, how do I get all this information out in a little short of time? But God told me, he said, listen, this time I want you to do a series. I want you to be able to give information to the people, but I want you to take your time giving it to them. He said, because I know the information I'm giving you is going to bless my people's lives. He said, but I want them to take it in slow so they can appreciate it and they can marinate it in Jesus' name. Okay. <laughs> my God from Zion. If you can go with me to Philippians, the fourth chapter. Go with me to Philippians, the fourth chapter. And in the fourth chapter of Philippians, it's talking about something that we all uh, um, basically, I feel like we all can kind of agree on. It's talking about vision. My God from Zion. It's talking about vision. And one thing about vision, you must understand. You must write the vision and you must make it plain so that all can see. And that's exactly what Philippians is talking about. Philippians, the fourth chapter. And we're going to go to verse 6. God, my God, my God, hallelujah. And I am so, so super excited because I know that when God is talking about a vision, he's talking about something that's going to uh, uh, um, push you into your next. And a lot of times with a vision, you don't always know exactly which way you're going. So this is why God says in his word, hallelujah. And verse 6, it says, be careful for nothing. I'm reading from the King, King James Version. I'm reading from the King James Version. And it says, be careful for nothing. And some of you probably have the King James Version. And it's telling you to not be anxious, my God, for nothing. And, and that's, that's one of the things that we must know about God. We can't be anxious. You got to be, you just got to be still. So in, in verse 6, it says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God I'll read that again it says be careful for nothing my God for some people it may say be uh, uh, don't be anxious for nothing my God be careful for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God God. Now, what that means is basically don't be anxious. Don't be so quick. Don't be hasty. Don't be so quick to run into everything. Uh, 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 just be, be patient. Be patient. And once you see something or you hear something from God, don't be so quick to run. Be patient. Be still. Don't be hasty. Begin to pray. Begin to pray and ask God, God, what, it, what, what you're showing me today, is this what you want me to do? Begin to pray. Talk to God. Acknowledge that you have received this information. Acknowledge that you're not ignoring the Father. Acknowledge that you understand He has called you to do something. He has called you to a vision. He has called you to the process. He's called you to the uh, 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 the mission. The uh, Or He's called you to ministry. Whatever He has called you to do, acknowledge that He has called you called you my God and then with that have thanksgiving 
with prayer and supplication make sure you have thanksgiving make sure there's thanksgiving so meaning make sure you thank the father for choosing you and i'm pointing to myself because i'm thanking the father today for choosing me thank the father for choosing you because man woman of god let me tell you something god has called you to do a work and it's up to you to take on that task and actually be Begin to do the work of the Lord. So begin to thank him. Father, thank you for choosing me. Because you could have called somebody else. You could have chosen someone. But you chose me. My God from Zion. Oh God. And then after that it says. Let your request be made known unto God. Now that you have you have acknowledged that God. Matter of fact. Now that you have a. Uh, uh, Put yourself in a position where you're patient. You heard God and you're willing to be patient. And now that you're willing to be patient, you're willing to thank him for choosing you. And then after thanking him for choosing you, now there's a request. Now, Father, the request is, now, Father, if this is what you want me to do, then I need you to supply the need. I need you to, to open up the door. Father, I need you to give me the instructions. Father, I need you to give me the direction. Father, I need you to give me wisdom. Father, I need you to give me knowledge. God, I need you to send what it is that you need me to do. I need you to send it because right now my finance is not meeting up. Right now my uh, 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 connections is not meeting up father i need you to send so you start making your request known unto god all righty so if the father had gave me um a word today he said be patient huh. being patient my god whoo glory to god being patient can be so difficult and you're probably saying okay i don't like that word patient hey i didn't like the word patient either because sometimes when you hear god say be patient or 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 you get a prophetic word and the person says be patient it feels like okay god has put the hammer on you and he told you to go do something but now he's slowing you down one thing about god nothing Oh, nothing happens before time. And one thing that God always will do, he will always make way for you if you're just patient. Nothing happens before the timing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. But you must be patient. Sometimes we can uh, uh, be hasty and, and sometimes we can move too fast, which can cause a problem later. So this is why God said, be patient. Be patient. And I know the questions of some of you is, Lord, how do I become patient? Some of you are asking God today, God, now you called me to do ministry and now you want me to be patient. But now how do I be patient when you said you called me to do ministry or you called me to do a work? You taught, called me to evangelism. You called me to, 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 to be able to spread your word, God. You called me to minister. How do I take the vision and then I be patient? How do I be patient? Patient. My goodness, patience, patience, patience can be tough. So this is why you're going to have to ask. You're going to have to ask God, God, give me the spirit to be patient. I know that you called me to do something. I know you called me to the ministry. I know you called me to do your work. I know you called me to evangelize and minister and preach and teach all over the world. I know, God, you called me to the nations. But, Father, give me the ability to be patient. Because if I go before you, I will mess up the process. If I go before you, I will cause more tragedy to happen. If I go before you, I'll cause myself trauma. If I go before you, huh, my God, my God, my God, things will begin to crumble. If I go before you, Father, nothing good will come out of this. So, Father, give me the spirit to, ooh, on how to be patient. And with being patient, it develops the word faith. So, and then some of you are saying now, how do I develop my faith? See, being patient, it actually helps you to develop, to develop faith. And faith sometimes is something that most of us have trouble with. 
You say, okay, God, you called me to the ministry. You called me to a work. You called me to do this. You called me, you called me, you called me, Father. And now how, how in the world do I become patient? Now I have to grow my faith. I have to develop faith. God, this is too much. You gave me a vision. How come I just can't run with the vision? See, one thing you must learn, when God gives you something, He's giving you something precious. He's giving you something that gold and, and money and, and fame can't buy. He's giving you something. He's actually putting souls in your hand. This is why when we teach and we preach, we must live right. This is why when we teach and we preach, we must walk upright. This is why when we teach and we preach, we must, my God from Zion, we must make sure that we're in order as leaders, as people who are mentors, people who lead other people. We must make sure that we are lining up with the word of God because God put something very precious, a precious gift that can't nobody buy and it's called a soul he puts souls in your hands my god and he wants you to lead these people but if you're not in the right standing with god how can you lead these people properly how can you lead these people to the water you must understand your life has to be in order in order for you to lead properly some of you are probably saying, okay, this is not fair. But God said he wanted me to preach. But yeah, see, this is where the patience part is. God may say, yes, I want you to preach. But most of the time, it doesn't happen over the night. Uh, uh, most time, it doesn't happen tomorrow. Uh, most time, it don't. Uh, God doesn't call you in the morning. And then you can go out and run uh, 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 later on that afternoon. A lot of times, it doesn't happen that way. This is why God says, be patient. Stand still and know that I am God. Stand still. Be patient in this process. Because he doesn't want you to skip anything. Because the moment that you skip something, the moment that you take the opportunity to skip over the number two and try to rush to get to number three, you will miss the most important part. Huh? And it won't, oh my God, when you get ready to hit three, you really won't know what to do. Because why? You have skipped. So it's so funny sometimes huh? in school, a lot of the, the teachers, they, they'll get a student that's an A plus student. He or she's doing so very well in school. And all of a sudden they'll call their parents up and say, oh my God, your son, your daughter is doing extremely well in my class. We would like to skip him or her. We would like to skip them into the next grade. And a lot of times it sounds amazing to get skipped. I'm going somewhere with this thing now. See, a lot of times it sounds amazing to be the one that gets skipped. But let me tell you something. We can skip over, hallelujah, the necessary things. We can skip over the needed things. We can skip over the things that uh, that will, the material that we're going to need for the next phase. So I am here to tell you, patience is a virtue. Patience, ladies and gentlemen. Patience, my children. Patience, my sisters and my brothers. Patience will get you everything that you need glory to God and with patience it will help develop your faith because when you're patient you have to learn how to trust that's a key word. You have to learn how to trust God. You have to learn how to uh, 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 trust the process. Uh, you got to learn how to trust that God hasn't left you. You got to learn that God is with you. You have to learn. You got to learn how to trust. Uh, you got to learn how to give up your will for God's will. Uh, you're going to have to learn how to let go of your own personal feeling, your own personal way, uh, and do it God's way. Uh, glory to God. So not only will you learn patience, but you will learn how to grow in faith. Your faith will increase. You will learn how to see God move. See, see, a lot of times we, we want God to do things, but we've never seen God move before. Or, 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 or we want God to move, but we want God to move like this. With faith, it takes time. My God, because see, you got to trust that when you do something the first time, it may fail the first time. And you got to still trust that God 
God is still on the throne. You got to trust that God still loves you. Ooh, glory to God. You got to trust that God will supply your every need according to his riches and glory. By what? Christ Jesus. So you got to learn how to develop your faith. Your faith has to be the most important thing. Because, see, you don't understand. That's a that's number two process. That's the part of the number two process. When you learn and master keyword when you have learned to master the word faith my god things may look dim but your faith will make sure you see the light oh glory to god i'll say that again ha when you develop and master the word faith everything else may seem dim but your faith will help you see the light okay i gotta move on Oh my God. Now with learning patience and learning how to uh, uh, increase your faith, hallelujah, because see, you got to learn patience. You got to learn how to increase your faith. So when you've learned how to uh, increase your faith, hallelujah, it pushes you to learn how, hallelujah, how to prioritize, how prioritizing your vision, oh God, will get you to the next level. Because see, a lot of times we can Make the vision we can write the vision we can write the vision real good huh but my god but if you don't know how to prioritize the vision if the vision is not in categories or if the vision is not in step one step two phase one phase two my god from zion what happens is you are all over the place you have to learn how to prioritize huh? the vision the vision has to be prioritized because if the vision is not prioritized you'll be all over the place and then you'll be skipping and missing skipping and missing skipping and missing and God has not called you to skip nor miss in this season okay hmm. oh God so I want you to go with me to Habakkuk Habakkuk the second chapter my God in the second verse hallelujah hallelujah glory to God it says in Habakkuk Habakkuk the second chapter verse 2 it says and the Lord answered me I'm here to tell you the Lord will answer you. Uh-huh. Because he answered me. So if he answered me, I know he's going to answer you. That's one thing you must learn in the vision. My vision and your vision may not always be the same, but it's God's vision. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. God has a vision for all of us. And the vision may not be the same, but it's the vision that God has given us. And neither one of our visions are any better than anybody else's. So if God can answer me, he will answer you. Oh, glory to God. So, and the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on a tablet so that he <laughs> may run who reads it. So, basically, God is saying, make a blueprint. Oh, glory to God. Another word that you must understand. The word blueprint. Because, see, with the blueprint, it has a map. It has something down. It has the information down to the point where you'll be able to understand it. And whoever else picks up the paper... Oh my God, or whoever else you pass the baton to, they will be able to understand the vision as well. So you always want to make sure that the vision is written properly. This is why you can't skip around. This is why you must have your things in order. This is why we have to prioritize the vision. Because see, when you prioritize the vision, for you're getting it ready for the next person. This is how come you're setting, you're setting it up for the next person. My God, this is how when a business is started they're able to pass it down to their children because why they have wrote the vision the the, uh, the vision is plain they're able to pass the baton so when the grandson takes over when the son takes over his father's uh business he can pass that over to his the son will pass it over to his son so now the grandson is is, is now reading the vision but because the vision is prioritized it's plain hallelujah he can continue to run with it glory to god Woo! glory to god i'm not going to be able to get through all of this huh, in one shot. Huh? This is why you're going to have to come back. Oh God, my God, when God gives you a vision huh, and he tells you to write it down, we cannot take it for granted that God has given us a vision. He will show you. He will tell you. He will give you all the tools that you need. But you must be obedient. That's the key, ladies and gentlemen. You must be obedient. 
my God, with understanding what God wants to do with you. Hallelujah. Yes, you. When when you when you get to the point where you understand what God is trying to do in you. And once again, I say yes, you. When God is trying to do something in you, it's your uh, it's your job to make it an important. It is your job to make it amazing. It is your job to know that you are smart enough. It's your job to know that this vision is important and it must be executed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you know where God is going with this vision. So God had told me if you will go with me, my God, we're going to stop right here at Proverbs. Hallelujah. It is Proverbs, uh, the sixth chapter. Glory to God. And uh, the 16th verse. And it says right here, there are six things the Lord hates. There are seven things that he cannot stand. The first one is pride. God does not like pride. And the reason why God does not like pride, because it damages. It messes with your professional development. My God, which causes you to have to build up an audience. And if you walk in pride, you won't be able to develop that professional, hallelujah, the, the professional development, hallelujah, which will cause you to build your audience. And the second thing that God does not like, that he hates, a lying tongue. Ladies and gentlemen, a lying tongue will cause you to block your personal, your personal development, which puts you in a position where you won't be able to master the skills that God has given you. So those two things that we must understand, when we walk in pride, it blocks everybody that wants to be able to be a blessing to you. It stops the people to coming from coming to you. It stops people from wanting to bless and sow into you. When you begin to lie, my God, people can't trust you. Uh, it messes with your skills. It messes with the ability to master what God is trying to do in you. So I want you to understand these are the things that God is trying to master inside of you. And I'm going to stop right there. If you know that God has given you a vision, today is the opportunity to work on making it plain. God loves you. God loves you so very much that he's willing to give you the secret to being successful. He's willing to give you the opportunity to grow in the kingdom. Today, God, we just thank you. We thank you for opening up the doors for your people to grow. Today we thank you, Father, for allowing your people to be the best that they could be. Father, we thank you for the visions that are starting. And thank you, Father, for allowing the vision to be made plain. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. In Jesus' name. Listen, I want you to tune in with me in two weeks. Hallelujah. And I want you to go with me on this journey. Hallelujah. Into being patient and to develop your faith so that you can learn how to prioritize the vision that God has given to you. My God. God from Zion, it has been a pleasure being with you today. I ask God to bless you. I ask God to keep you. And I ask God to continue to mold you and make you to be what he would have you to be and not what you want to be. In Jesus Christ's name. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.